Hello, everybody. Welcome back. And this is Jim Arroyo here with the Avapai County Preparedness Team. I am the chapter president, and I am the leader of the Oath Keepers of Yavapai County, still the largest active Oath Keepers group in the United States, not affiliated with any national organization. We are an autonomous, independent group. So I want to open up this lecture with giving special credit to someone named Lieutenant Colonel Steve Murray. I had the distinct pleasure of meeting Trooper and Lieutenant Colonel Steve Murray at one of our meetings. We had invited them up and they came and we're gonna have them come back and uh, do a presentation for us. But if you've never heard Lieutenant Colonel Steve Murray, um, his sit reps, uh, he is on Rumble. He is also on Telegram and he puts these out usually one a week or so. I highly recommend you go there and listen to these. Lieutenant Colonel Steve Murray has a long military history, uh, intelligence officer, um, guys connected to very high levels. You're gonna wanna listen to the things he has to say. But one of the things he's also talking about because we are preparing for a second civil war in the United States, okay? Full disclosure, we are not the ones that are going to perpetrate a civil war. That's what governments do. What we are doing is getting the civilian population prepared to ride out the inevitable of a full kinetic civil war in the United States and what that might look like. And one of the things uh, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Murray is always talking about is building community, building relationships, uh, expanding your sphere of influence, things of this nature. Um, this is important. Building relationships right now with people that you know and trust is extremely important because what it's gonna take to get through this, the lone wolf scenario is not gonna work, guys. If you're one of those that thinks they're gonna run off into the woods and lone wolf it, you're not gonna survive this. They'll find you eventually. Uh, you need to build relationships with friends, family, people you can trust that are definitely not like-minded. Um, and you need to be able to work together with those people. This is the hardest part. And I lectured on this at our meeting uh, just yesterday. I don't care if you're Dev Guru, SEAL Team 6, you're a Ranger unit, you're a Green Beret unit, you're a Delta Special Forces, all of those people have outstanding individual skill sets. But if you can't put it together in a group dynamic and work together as a team, they get rid of you because that's the most important thing. Everybody's high speed, low drag, or you wouldn't be in one of those tier one type units or even a tier two unit but you've got to be able to work with people or it's not going to function. So the next step you want to start really giving some consideration to, if you haven't already, is wargaming out every scenario. What that means is basically you're going to look at any given scenario that can happen, whether it's civil unrest, civil war, uh, an economic collapse, and you're going to wargame it out for yourself and your family of what you're going to do first. What is it you need to do to be prepared? What is it you need to have ready for your family? If this happens, what are you going to do? If this happens, what's the next step? Um, remember the pace. Uh, PACE is a contingency planning sequence the military now uses. We didn't use this when I was in, it was a little different, but PACE stands for primary, alternative, contingency, and emergency, okay? Always have a plan, primary plan. Your contingency plan or your alternative plan is your plan B. Plan C is your contingency plan. You get to plan E, you're already in, in a big trouble, okay? Your emergency plan, um, in my world, we call that E&E, &E, escape and evade. Okay, you, everything's turned to crap. You don't want to end up there. So you want to have good planning. Um, prepare for all threats. Don't say, okay, I'm ready if the federal government comes through my front door, or I'm ready if this happens with this group. Keep in mind, your greatest threats right off the bat are going to be your own neighbors, okay? Then you've got roving gangs. You could have organized drug cartels, street gangs, MS-13, uh, any of the other type of gangs that are out there. You've got the screwballs like Antifa and BLM. You've got the communist groups that'll be out on the streets. You need to be prepared for all threats and understand what those threats may be. Focus on self-reliance, self-sufficiency, preparedness, and readiness. Now look these words up, okay? I'm not gonna give you all these definitions, but they all have specific meanings. Self-reliance, self-sufficiency, preparedness, and readiness. Know the differences and be ready to explain that to people that you're trying to help. 
build individual skill sets, as I said, build group skill sets so you guys can work together. All right, let's get into some nuts and bolts here real quick, okay? This is a very short video. I'm gonna go into more details on this in the future, but to get you moving, uh, right off the bat, let me recommend two books. One, A Failure of Civility, if you can still find it, written by Jack Lawson and Mike Garand, and then the Civil Defense Manual, which is an expanded version. It's twice the thickness of the original A Failure of Civility. Um, that manual will explain a lot of this in detail. Um, CivilDefenseManual.com is where you go to get that. Go online, you go direct to the website, it's the only way to get that manual, and it'll explain a lot of this. So let's just go over it in a nutshell. Think security, proper weapons and ammunition, uh, lights, radios, IFACs for medical purposes. Um, there is certain equipment that everybody is going to need when this all starts to happen, and it's going to happen rather quickly, so be ready. Um, also be ready to explain to people how you're gonna secure your neighborhood. Foot patrols, vehicle patrols, roadblocks, guard posts, challenge and passwords, everything you're gonna need to do to secure an environment to keep people out of your inner perimeter where you can protect your family and your property, your homes and your vehicles. Um, set up a communication section. We stress that more than anything. You ain't got comma, you ain't got jack. It's that simple. We use the military system, okay? You've got to have good communications. Without them, you're not gonna be able to operate. You're gonna be at a serious disadvantage. Go out and invest in some bubble pack radios, your simple FRS, GMRS radios. You can pick them up at Big Five. You can order them online in bulk. Uh, ham radios, we recommend the Baofangs. They're cheap, they're easy to learn how to use. Uh, get the UV5Rs, the, the 8Rs, the 9Rs, there's all different ones out there, get them all programmed. If you have problems with that, go on our website and watch the videos on how to do that. Okay, be prepared to defend yourself, your family, and your neighbors, okay? And then finally be able to defend your community, all right? No one who is actually sane will fault you for wanting to defend yourself. Now notice there's a qualifier in there. Uh, a lot of people out there are gonna accuse you of being militia, being vigilantes, being all this sort of crap. That's all nonsense, okay? We are not a militia, never have been, but we get accused of being such. What we are is a security element to teach people how to be able to defend themselves, their homes, their families, their neighbors, and their, their communities. So you need to know how to do that, okay? A vigilante is one who takes the law into your own hands. You're not doing that. You're defending your property, your family, and your friends. And if you have law enforcement, when this all comes apart, this is a scenario where law enforcement's not going to be there. They've already gone home to take care of their families. There are no law enforcement on the streets. We're in a full collapse. We're in a civil war, possibly foreign invasion from enemy occupation. There's a lot of different scenarios where there won't be law enforcement. Trust me, they're going to want to be there right next to you defending that neighborhood and manning that roadblock to keep people out of their section, okay? So you're not taking the law into your own hands. This is still America, this is still a God-given right. You have the right to self-defense, so utilize it. When a threat presents itself, you need to stop the threat, okay? If you don't stop that threat, that threat will stop you and then we'll go on to assault someone else. So you have to get the mindset right. This is not something that's easy to teach uh, the civilian world that is not trained for this type of operation, but it's something everybody can learn to do. It's all mindset. And trust me, when somebody is coming at your family or at your home or through your front door, it's not gonna take you long to figure out what you need to do. So the bottom line is, see a threat, stop the threat, otherwise, Criminals are known to move on to the next place and they're just gonna harm someone else. So eliminate that threat. Uh, let's see, <clears throat> Victory Gardens. Okay, remember during World War II, um, that's how they got through. Victory Gardens uh, helped uh, feed their families and their neighbors while the government was struggling to provide enough food to feed the military that was overseas. So Victory Gardens are good. Uh, get something planted in the ground now. Start growing your own food. Um, we lectured on this yesterday. The, uh, the farms are being, how do I put this? Let's just put it straight out. The produce is being injected with mRNA vaccine. Simple as that. 
It's being contaminated. You don't want to eat a lot of this commercially produced produce because it's already been proven to be tainted. What you produce at home, you can control. What you buy in a grocery store, someone else is controlling what you're eating. So grow your own food because fresh food may not be available. And then the last area I wanna go into is stocking up on vitamins and minerals. This is important. You should have already been doing that because we just came out of this pandemic. Fake or not fake, real, doesn't matter what everybody thinks. We went through a pandemic. A lot of people got sick. A lot of people died for whatever reason. Um, a lot of them, their immune systems were compromised. So what we've always taught is build your immune system so that you can be ready for any and all types of viruses that may come down the line. So we put it out originally back in 2019 and early 2020 after this thing got going. A, B, C, D, zinc, vitamin A, vitamin B complex is what I use, uh, vitamin C, vitamin D3 is what's important, D3. And then the zinc, the zinc is what helps uh, uh, fight off the virus into the cells. Then later on, we started to learn from Dr. Zelenko, who passed away recently, that if you used hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin in conjunction with the zinc, it stops the virus dead. Well, there was an alternative that is not prescription, and that is called quercetin. So you can order quercetin online. I use that as part of my routine, and I take this every day to build my immune system to fight off any and all viruses. So there's a lot of stuff on this, you know, just the vitamins and minerals section, we can go on for an hour and a half. Well, we're not gonna do that. But we want you to look into this and let you know that these are things that are critical right now. You've got to get this stuff done and be prepared for what is being told to us through our intelligence section that this is gonna come apart. This is going to go kinetic one way or the other. Uh, regardless of the political situation, anything is possible. So pay attention. If you have questions, comments, concerns, contact us. Again, we are not training you to fight in a civil war. We are preparing you to defend yourself and be prepared to survive the outcome of what a civil war can do. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you, and we'll catch you on the next video.